All right, everybody, what is crepuscular? What is anti-crepuscular? Why am I so excited? Why should you be excited about an anti-crepuscular ray? Well, uh, I think it's pretty cool, and that's what I wanted to make for our subject for today's Mondays with Mike. So thank you so much for joining me. I do this every Monday at 1230, and then, of course, it's posted uh, on YouTube subsequently, and you can go back and watch it. Maybe you're watching it, and it's not 1230 on a, on a Monday. But anyway, I'm... Uh, Chief Meteorologist Mike Iskovitz from Fox 26 here in Houston, and I want to thank you for tuning in. So, let's get into it. First of all, it's a fun word to say. Crepuscular. It almost sounds a little bit like a medical condition, but it isn't. <laughs> so, I got a, a picture sent to me from a viewer named Shane in Laporte, which if you're not familiar, Laporte is uh, to the east of Houston. And sent me this picture and said, well, what is this? Well, I hope you can see it. So you see how there's some beams that are visible here, coming in from that way, and coming in from that way, and from that way, okay? So these are what are called anti-crepuscular rays, or anti-crepuscular rays. Okay, well, first of all, we need to talk about what is crepuscular, and why are these anti-crepuscular? Let's get into it, okay? Beginning with some help from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary to give us a little bit of a clue of what we're talking about here. So, the definition of crepuscular is relating to or resembling twilight. So, we're talking about things that generally happen in the very early part of the day, around sunrise, in the very late part of the day, around sunset, and we could use it to describe light and the sky, you know, around sunrise and sunset time, but it's also used to describe things like insects and other animals. You know, we've probably heard the term like nocturnal, like, oh, owls are nocturnal, right? Or possums, nocturnal animals. And then some animals are diurnal animals. They come out during the day. Well, there are some uh, uh, animals that exhibit behavior of crepuscular. So they're most active at sunrise and most active at sunset. You know, maybe some birds or mosquitoes and stuff like that are crepuscular. So, um, yeah, that is what it means, okay? But how does that relate to some of these phenomena that we see in the sky, clouds and so forth? Well, let's go back to this. Right now, we're going to look at a crepuscular. So this is not anti-crepuscular. This is just a regular crepuscular ray. And here's the difference, okay? And you can always know this, and I'm gonna be honest with you, there are some meteorologists that I've seen online, not naming any names, who actually do get this wrong sometimes, okay? The term crepuscular does not have anything to do with whether or not it's a, it's a shadow in the middle or a bright spot in the middle, or, or a bunch of small, narrow shadows or one big, bright, uh, dark shadow. That's not what changes it. The difference is if you are facing the sun, okay, like in this case, this is the sunset, okay, and the light is being blocked by some clouds in the distance. If you are looking at the sun, if you're facing in the direction of the sun, and you see this phenomenon of light, that is a crepuscular ray. By the way, a ray is just a line that's pointing in a direction. It has like an origin and then it shoots out that way. That's from geometry class, that's a ray. So the light in the sky is visible because of particles that are in the air, dust or clouds and things like that that allow us to see the light bouncing off of it. But if you're looking toward the sun and you see beams coming out of it, whether they're dark or light, that is crepuscular, okay? Now, this is where it gets almost difficult to understand how. Okay, so I think we could understand the sun is here. You have this bright ball of light, and there's light emanating from it. Anticrepuscular is pretty amazing to see. Let me go ahead, wait, I'm going to fast forward to this. Anticrepuscular is pretty amazing to, to understand, because like the first image I showed you, this is looking away from the sun. Okay, so picture the sun is at your back here, and you're looking that way toward the other side of the horizon, away from the sun. That's anti-crepuscular. Well, why would they be exhibiting this behavior though? I think we can understand that if the sun is here 
and you have these light beams emanating out from the sun. That kind of makes logical sense. But now if you're looking away from the sun, why would the beams that you're seeing here be converging onto a, a point right there? Why would they be doing that? It seems counterintuitive. It seems like they should be spreading out in all directions, right? Well, the trick is that all of these beams, it's all a matter of perspective. So the beams that you're seeing here are straight. So imagine a long straightaway, the straightest road that you can think of. And you'll see the exact phenomenon that we just observed. So when you look at this very, very uh, long road here, we can use this example here of Route 50 uh, in the Northwest. And whereas in the example of a crepuscular ray, you're looking toward the sun. So this would be the sun, okay? And then the lights spread out from it. With an anti-crepuscular ray, okay, like this one, the beams go in towards something. Why in the world would they go in toward it? Same reason this road converges onto a point in the distance. Okay, we know that the road doesn't get skinnier. It's the same road, right? Same width road. But at the very beginning, it looks super wide. And then when you look farther and farther off in the distance, it just disappears into a tiny single point. So that's what happens with this type of cloud formation or this type of light phenomenon in the sky. So that's what we call an anticrepuscular ray. And it, it's neat because you don't see it really that often. And, and this is, I, I always try to encourage, like, I haven't done it for a while because of COVID, but, you know, if I go to schools or, or just talk to people, I always encourage people to just take a second and look at the sky. I'm as guilty as anyone of staring at my phone constantly and going through my TikTok feed, but sometimes if you just take a minute, even if it's once a day, you don't want to stare at the sun, obviously, but you, know, you just... Take a look up there, whether it's at night or during the day. I like looking up during the day because I like looking at the clouds and stuff, but there are lots and lots of interesting things that happen in the sky that a lot of people wouldn't notice. And, and this is one of them. Um, you know, sometimes you can see um, where the clouds, if you have cirrus clouds in the sky, you'll see some cloud iridescence where this, the cloud almost looks like it's forming a rainbow, but it isn't. Um, it isn't, you know, technically a rainbow. It's made of ice crystals. Uh, you can see things like a sun dog, where at sunset there'll be these bright white spots on either side of the sun. Um, you can see um, a, a, a ring around the sun or around the moon, which is called a 22 degree arc. Uh, and so it, sometimes you have to just look because <laughs> there are so many cool things there that you would never see. So anyway, um, I would encourage you to... Uh, start to look in the sky for crepuscular rays. They're easy to see. I mean, you could look for them anytime. First of all, you need clouds um, and you need the sun to be coming up or going down. And you'll very, very often see them. Uh, Anticrepuscular is more rare because the sky conditions have to be just right. You have to be looking in the right direction and you have to be paying attention. So if you have any of these, uh, send me a picture because, like I said, they are rare to see. The anti-crepuscular uh, facing away from the sun. Um, as far as uh, what else is happening, uh, other than that, I wanted to move on and talk about the drought, the Texas drought. I know we've been talking about this a lot lately, and I don't want to belabor the point, but we really desperately need rain, and we do have it coming. You know, it's, it's going to be an issue for us, in fact, this week with a pretty decent chance for rain. Uh, but the new drought maps that were released on Thursday were not good. In fact, it showed 81% of Texas under a drought. It showed 44% of Texas here under at least an extreme drought. And there was uh, almost one out of uh, one fifth of Texas. I think it, the number was 17%, 17 or 18% classified as being at an exceptional drought. So that's like a category five of droughts. And under these circumstances, what you get is you get things like crop damage, you get water restrictions, you get an increased risk for wildfires or brush fires. And so it's going to be maybe good timing 
if and when we get our rounds of rain this week, that you know it may save the 4th of July, actually, because the way things were shaping up, if we don't get any much needed rain for a lot of these areas, like Fort Bend County and Brazoria and Galveston County and a lot of these spots off toward the south, uh, if we don't get a nice soaking, then the 4th of July might have to be scrapped or rescheduled because it's just kind of dangerous to be lighting anything on fire in this kind of environment. Down on Galveston, by the way, they already are not doing fireworks for multiple reasons, one of them being environmental reasons, uh, but another just, uh, you know, because it's cool. And they're doing a drone display. You know, so they're going to have a bunch of drones in the sky doing one of these, you know, where they can spell out words and they'll have music playing and things like that. I kind of miss the explosions and the booms and all that, but it might be kind of cool to see. So Galveston Island's 4th of July celebration has drones in it. So that, that might be kind of a cool thing to see. Um, as far as tropical development, um, you know, we'll keep an eye on the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, of course, as always, the water temperatures are warm. The latest analysis here from uh, the National Centers for Environmental Prediction, or what's called NCEP, uh, show 85 through 87 degrees approximately. It's warmer closer to the coastline, and it's a slightly less warm out in the middle of the Gulf, but we're looking at widespread middle 80s uh, for water temperatures out there in the Gulf of Mexico. So of course, you know, it, that's just one of the factors that goes into tropical systems forming, uh, but it's an important one. So it's definitely something that's going to catch our attention. So I hope you learned something today about crepuscular, anti-crepuscular, and all of that good stuff. And uh, you got to work it into a conversation. That's the thing. You have to find a way to work it into a conversation and impress somebody or just annoy them. Hey, I'm going to be uh, out of the uh, office, at least. They're not on the air this week uh, because we do have some important meetings that we're attending with Fox Weather. Fox Weather is our sister streaming network. So they're based out of New York City and they are like the Weather Channel, but better. Uh, right now, they're exclusively um, streaming. So you could either download the Fox Weather app. It's a really, really good app. And you could watch it, you know, you could watch live what's happening. Of course, you could also just get your local forecast and event forecast and things like that and alerts. Uh, you can also find them streaming on any platform that you have, like whether you have a Roku or Amazon Fire TV or, or Apple TV or whatever device you use to watch um, broadband uh, streaming channels, download the Fox Weather app there, and then you could turn them on anytime. They have a team of meteorologists. I don't know how many, 20, 25, I mean, they have a lot. And um, so we're gonna be going up there and talking to them and you know, um, seeing how we could work together better and all of that stuff. So that's gonna be really, really cool. So uh, I'll be off the air this week, I'm on the air here. <laughs> just for the time being online. And I really, really appreciate you joining in for my discussion of all things crepuscular. Have a great week.